All right, let's look at practice with basic conversions. Let's go through how you go about doing this. So make sure to always check the instructions, show your work, box your answer, include correctly abbreviated units, and of course, don't forget scientific notation. All right, now let's look at this. Are these done using multiplication, division, or addition, subtraction? Generally, when we look at the conversions that we start with, these are all the ones that involve multiplying. So generally, most conversions are going to involve multiplication division. There are certainly some exceptions, including, for example, ones involving temperature, but we're not going to do that here. We're going to stick to the ones that involve multiplying by conversion factors. So multiplication and division it is. When rounding your final answer to the calculations below, will you count significant figures or decimal places? Because we're doing this most of the time, we are generally counting significant figures. Work is required. We grade your work more than we grade the answers, which is why no credit if work is not shown. No credit if you have numbers with no units. And no credit if the answer is not boxed. Because we need to know which one's your final answer and which one is just on the way. So let's talk about how you'd go about actually doing these calculations. Beginning with one meter equals how many centimeters? Now, if you know that centi means one one hundredth, you should know that there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. But if you just write a hundred centimeters, you're wrong. Here's how you actually show that. You write your given first, one meter, and then set up a multiplication for a conversion factor. And then because one of these is a base unit, meter, you know you only need one conversion factor. It's going from a base unit to some version of it. So you set up your one conversion factor equals centimeters because we're going to do our units first and then we're going to set up our numbers. So you know you need to put meters on bottom because meter needs to cancel meter. Yes, you can use just the abbreviation M for meter. That's the standard abbreviation. Centimeters is CM. Put it on top so that after meter cancels meter, you still have centimeters and it goes over here. So let's confirm that meter will cancel meter. Yes, it will. Now you got to figure out where to put the numbers, because step one was write the given. Step two, after you set this up anyway, uh, put the units to make sure they work out. And then step three is you put the actual numbers. Centi means one one hundredth. So you know the number 100 is involved in there somewhere. So you put the big number next to the small unit. So the smaller unit is centimeter, because that's one one hundredth of a meter. So put the big number next to the small unit and put an automatic one next to the other unit. So this is saying 1 times 100 divided by 1 equals 100 centimeters. This is how you show your work for it. Okay, notice infinite sig figs because it's a conversion factor with metric units both on top and bottom. So infinite sig figs, 1 sig fig, 1 sig fig, we're good. A scientific notation could be used. This is 1 times 10 to the second, but yeah, this is fine. Onward then. 10 hectograms is how many grams? So 10 hectograms, and this is a base unit, so it's just one, one conversion factor, equals grams. So we need grams on top, that way it winds up in the final answer. We need hectograms on the bottom, that way hectograms cancels hectograms. You have to remember that hecto means 100, and you put the big number next to the small unit. So the number 100 goes somewhere. 100 grams is bigger than 1 gram, so 1 gram is smaller than 100 grams. This is the smaller unit. Gram is smaller than hectogram. Therefore, the big number goes next to the small unit, and an automatic one goes the other way. So this is telling us that this number times 100 divided by 1 equals our answer, and 10 times 100 is 1,000 grams. This is one significant figure. This is infinite significant figures because it's both metric units from the conversion factor. So that means one sig fig, one sig fig. Now this is greater than or equal to a thousand. You need to use scientific notation here. So that is equal to one times 10 to the third grams. All right, onward. 15.8 deci candelas equals how many candelas? So 15.8 deci candela all right there we go now um equals how many candelas so base unit 
non-base units. So in other words, we just need one conversion factor because one of the things is a base unit. Conversion factor equals candela. And uh, what we're going to be doing here is looking at a... Okay, so let's put de deci candela on the bottom so that it cancels and put candela on top so that it is in the final answer. Deci means one-tenth, so the number 10 is involved. Put the number 10 next to the small unit. A tenth of a candela is smaller than candela, so since this is a small unit, the 10 goes here, and an automatic 1 goes in the other one. So this divided by 10 equals this. So this divided by 10 is simply 1.58 candelas. And 3 sig figs, 3 sig figs, we're good. Box it and call it done. All right, moving onward. Uh, let's see, 9,748 meters equals how many kilometers? 9,748 meters, yes, I'll use the standard abbreviation. This is a base unit, so we need, we know we only need one conversion factor, equals kilometers, and we're going to put meters on bottom so it cancels, we're going to put kilometers on top so that kilometers becomes the final unit, and then we know that kilo means a thousand, so that means you need to have a thousand in here somewhere. Now, one meter is much smaller than a thousand meters. A kilometer is way bigger than a meter. So since meter is a small unit, we put the big number next to the small unit and a one automatically next to the other unit, the bigger one. Um, so this is saying take this times one divided by a thousand, and that tells you how many kilometers it is. So this divided by a thousand equals 9.748 kilometers. Three or four significant figures, infinite sig figs because they're both metric. So just four sig figs, four sig figs, we're good. By the way, these could be done using scientific notation. They'd be equally fine. So uh, 0 0.05472 nanoliters equals how many liters? So 0 0.05472 nanoliters times blank. Again, base unit tells me all I need one conversion factor equals some number of liters. Uh, okay, well, that means we need liters on top, so it winds up in the final answer. We need nanoliters on bottom so that it can cancel with nanoliters. And then nano means one one billionth. A billionth can be written as either one, one uh, with nine zeros in it, or you can write it as one times ten to the ninth. Either way is fine. But... Uh, the big number goes next to the small unit, and one billionth of a liter is much smaller than one liter. So one liter is a billion, and you can again either put one times ten to the ninth or a billion. I'll just put one times ten to the ninth, but you could put a billion in there. It's also fine. Same thing. And uh, basically we need to take this times this, divide by a billion, equals whatever it's going to be in liters. So... 0.05472 nanoliters divided by a billion. You can either do 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or you can do 1 times 10 to the 9th because that's a billion. Oops. There we go. And uh, if you do that, you get that number 5.472 times 10 to the 11th, or negative 11th. And this is one, two, three, four significant figures. One, two, three, four significant figures. You're good. Let's box that answer. Onward. Amperes equals how many deca amperes? All right, let's look at that. All right, so uh, 0 0.00486 amperes. Oops, let me correct that. Zero zero four four eight six amperes, and this is a base unit, so you only need one conversion factor. Equals deca amperes. D A A. All right, so, uh, well, let's put deca amperes on top, and amperes on bottom. Deca means ten, so you need to put ten next to the smaller unit. 10 liters or 10 amperes versus 1 ampere. 
one ampere is smaller. So let's put 10 next to the small unit. Big number goes next to the small unit. Automatic one goes next to the other one. So if you're going to do this, you take this times one divided by 10, and that will give you not too hard. It's just 0.0004. It's just another zero on the turn of scientific notation. But nonetheless, we'll do it here on the calculator just to make it easy to see. Oops. Let's see. Divide by 10. And then second function, this button, scientific notation. There you go. 4.486 times 10 to the negative fourth. That's how many decaamperes it would be. So it would basically just be adding another zero in here and then converting to scientific notation. Um, okay. On, right, oops, you do need to correct a typo on this one. So anyway, on to this question right here. That many seconds equals how many microseconds? Let's do what we should do. 6.340 times 10 to the 3 seconds, which is 6,340 seconds in case you're curious. And one of these, this is a base unit, so we only need one conversion factor because a base unit is present. And it's going to equal microseconds. Yes, that's how you write the abbreviation for microseconds. That's Greek letter mu. It means micro. All right, so let's put microseconds on top. That way it winds up in the answer. Put seconds on the bottom. That way seconds cancel seconds to give microseconds for your answer. Micro means a million. So you need to put the million in here somewhere. Now, a millionth of a second is far smaller than a second. So the number million goes next to this unit because this is the smaller unit. You can either write a million the long way, one followed by six zeros, or you can write it as one times 10 to the sixth. So one million microseconds is equal to one second. So we take this times a million divided by one. So 6.340 times 10 to the third, close parentheses, times a million and you can either one, one, two, three, four, five, six, or if you don't want to worry about actually counting out the run number of zeros, you can do one times 10 to the sixth. Oops, let's put that in parentheses. One times 10 to the sixth. And then if you do that, you get this number. Oh boy, let's put that in scientific notation. 6.34 times 10 to the ninth. Microseconds. Now, Careful, one, two, three, four significant figures. One, two, three significant figures. Better make it have the correct number of sig figs. Now we're good to box this one. All right, and finally onto the last one. Let's write down the given, 1.4559 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms. Multiplied by, we have grams in here, so that means it's just a one factor conversion because we got our base unit, and it's gonna equal grams. So, kilograms goes on bottom so it can cancel and not be in the final answer. Gram goes on top so that it can be in the final answer. Kilo means a thousand, so you got to put a thousand next to the small unit. A gram is smaller than a thousand grams, so since gram is the small unit, the big number a thousand goes next to it, and one goes next to this bigger unit here. So this times a thousand divided by one. Let's do it. 1.4559 times 10 to the negative fifth times a thousand. I could divide it by one, but it doesn't do anything. It gives this answer. All right, now let's convert that to scientific notation. That's 1.4559 times 10 to the negative second, or you can have your calculator do that for you. There you go. 1.4559 times 10 to the negative second grams. And this is five significant figures, five significant figures. That's why it's good. Again, infinite sig figs here because these are both metric units, just like this has infinite sig figs because they're both time units. All right, there we have it.